everyone, I'm Priscilla. And I'm Tanya. And welcome to The Upper Room, the channel that empowers you, the worshipper, to go deeper. So yeah, guys, thank you so, so much for joining us once again. It's just a pleasure to have you on board. And thank you so much for also watching the videos. And thank you so much for subscribing and liking. This is all happening for you. So yeah, if you guys did watch the last video, which is all about oneness taught by Jerome, it really was a great one. I think one thing that stood out for me, which he said was, um, to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness is to worship him in oneness. Whenever we worship in the beauty of oneness, he sees holiness. And I absolutely love that. And also we've um, had loads of comments from different people all around. Um, we've, we've received one comment from a, a young girl called Trudy and she literally said this is really what she needed to hear. And also another comment from Lois who was saying that it's something that the body of Christ needs to hear more often. So we thank you so much for um, the comments. Keep them coming. Let us know what you're, what you're thinking about the teachings that are being taught right now. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. So I don't know about you guys, but I know with me, sometimes in a place of worship, my mind can be all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's social media, there's all sorts of things, there's a busyness of life that can just keep you so engaged in your mind, constantly thinking about what you're gonna do tomorrow, and all of these things that just rush constantly in our minds. When it comes to a place of worship, it's so hard to get all your faculties together and actually get to a place of focus where you can you can actually see God or hear from God. This teaching is gonna tell us how we can actually get to that place, how we can get to a place of focus, what we need to do to make sure that we are engaging when we get into worship. We have Pastor Andrew, he's gonna talk about focus in worship. You do not wanna miss this. Over to our panel. Jeremiah 29 and verses 13. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Um, today I really want to share something that I think is an amazing principle to just completely and utterly explode your worship life. And it's found in this verse. Um, in the society that we live in today, I believe that what I'm about to talk about, the power of focus, is something that has been completely and utterly, um, no, I can't say completely and utterly, but it has been forgotten. Um, and it's been forgotten because of the complete and utter onslaught of all the things that are consistently hitting us. Um, from left, right, and said everything from media to the cares of this life. And, and now probably more so than any other age that has ever existed, we just have so much coming at us that learning how to truly focus is actually becoming a forgotten art. And this scripture that we start with says this, that God says that you will find me. This is the promise. It doesn't say you might. It says you shall find me, but on condition of this, if you seek me with all your heart. And therein lies the power to truly have explosive worship, is the ability to be able to summon all of your heart. Because this scripture implies that we can seek him with some of our heart. But God says, I don't just want some of your heart. I don't want a bit. I don't even want 99.9% .9 of your heart. God is saying he wants all of our heart. And it, so it shows us that our hearts can be defragmented and, and, and split up and in, into different parts. And, 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 and I, I believe this is one of the key reasons why so many of us in terms of worship might have an experience sometimes where it's like, it was a great worship, worship session, but I feel, like, I feel like so much more could have happened. And really the key is the art of focus. It's the art of being able to summon your heart. Now, when I say focus, what do I mean? And rather than giving you a simple dictionary explanation, uh, uh, let me give a, a picture illustration. Um, when you go outside and, you, you look in, 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 and you're in daylight and you look outside, you, you can see everything around you, and that's because of light. Light is the most unintrusive. I mean, it, it illuminates your environment, but it's very unintrusive. It's, it's see-through, if you could describe it like that. It, it, it is beautiful. It, it, it is... It is Non-intrusive in the sense of it absolutely brings no harm. When we go outside and we feel the heat, that's not coming from the light. That's coming from, that's another issue. That's heat. It's not necessarily light. But this is the power 
of light when it's focused. When light is focused, it becomes a laser. A laser can cut through steel. Something that is so unintrusive and, and so humble, if I could say that, has the power to cut through steel when it's focused. That is exactly what happens to your worship life when you learn the ability to be able to focus, to be able to summon your heart from wherever it might be and be able to literally put all of your mind on God. Now, when I say focus in worship, what do I mean? Yes, I mean being able to summon your heart. But what else do I mean? I believe our ability to focus also is also because we are a triune being. We are spirit, we are soul, and we are body. And the reality is, the scripture teaches, is that be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So your spirit has a mind. We also too are supposed to renew our physical mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we also too have a mind. But also the Bible speaks about the dictates of the flesh. And so you begin to see that our spirit has its own thought patterns, can have its own thought patterns. Our mind can also think, and even our body can also have a sense of thought. And so when I say focus in worship, I believe true focus happens when your spirit and your soul and your body come into complete oneness. Now, I know these are things you're going to consistently keep hearing on this channel, but they're very key principles to having an explosive and an amazing worship life. And so true focus, I believe, happens when your spirit is able to worship God and when your soul comes in alignment with your spirit and when your body comes in alignment with your soul. That is true focus. When that happens, you are now focused and your worship can go to a whole nother level. But really, the key that I really want to share with you today, and we could share so much, but the one I really want you to walk away with is a tool to help you focus in worship. And that tool is spoken about in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we'll start from verses 4. It says this, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that is in the King James. It says casting down imaginations. Now listen to that. You know, in our, in our Greek foundationally based culture, um, imaginations are really belittled. You know, many people will tell you, um, you know what, stop building castles in the air. And they, they usually tell you that when you're daydreaming or when you're imagining stuff. It's like, listen, come back to the real world. Your imagination is your imagination. It's not going to benefit you. It's not going to profit you anything. But imagination is so powerful that God took time in his word to say, listen, every imagination that goes against Christ, every imagination that doesn't glorify God, you've got to cast it down. Why? have no time to go into it, but imaginations and thought and your thought life links you to a spiritual reality. It really, really does. And God says one of the key things that links you to a great spiritual reality is the way you imagine. Isn't that incredible? And therein lies the key to having explosive focus, is learning to use imagination in your worship. Now, if I could summarize and if I could say it uh, in, in a way to make it nice and neat and sweet is that imagination is actually the gateway to the eyes of your spirit. In other words, when you begin to imagine, you're literally opening up your ability to see into the spiritual realm, to actually see what's happening in heavenly places. And in worship, there is no better time than actually to begin to imagine. And do you know what science is teaching us? Science actually tells us that your brain does not know the difference between imagination and reality. Now, I don't know about you, but that is incredible. That means that if I am sitting here right now and I begin to imagine an angel right now to my right hand side, right here. If I begin to imagine that right now, my brain cannot tell the difference between me getting up tomorrow and going to work and experiencing this real life than that imagination I just had. As far as my brain is concerned, me seeing that angel was as real. Now this is incredible. And you can begin to see how imagination has, and how Satan uses imagination against us. Because if it's that real to my mind, it means it's gonna be that real to my body. Because my body was created to serve my mind. 
When I'm hungry, I say I want something to eat, I get up, walk, grab what I want to eat, put it in my mouth. My body serves my mind. And you even see it, when you're afraid, what happens? You begin to feel uh, certain things in your body. You can't explain, you, you, you can even, your knees sometimes feel wobbly, your heart starts to beat faster. Why? Because your body is being a servant of the thoughts of your mind. And in that same instance, when you begin to use imagination, your body begin, begins to come in alignment with your mind. But not only that, because of the nature of what imagination is, it opens you up to the spirit and therefore your spirit too begins, to, you begin to focus and come into alignment with your spirit. And therefore you have your spirit, your soul and body in alignment. In other words, you're in focus. And when that happens, your worship life can explode. So next time you're in worship and you're singing a song and the song says, God, you are great. Don't just sing it intellectually. How does God being great look like? Next time you're in worship and you're saying, God, you're magnificent. What does magnificent look like? Open the eyes of your imagination. Begin to see it. And as you begin to see it, literally, I kid you not, you're literally beginning to see into heaven. I was absolutely blessed by that teaching. Mm. That was such a great teaching. It, it, it's so applicable to right now. It's so applicable to the lifestyle that most of us live. We're mm -hmm. so distracted and using our imagination. That, that's such a great tool. Using our imagination to be able to get into a place of focus where we're seeing the words that we're singing about. I think mm -hmm. that was such a great tip and I, I'm gonna be doing that. And I think as well, it's never just just life in general, but even when you're just in your quiet time with the Lord, it's, it's, I think it's sometimes easier when you're in a group to focus, but when it's just you in your room, it's like, okay, Lord, how am I going to do this? <laughs> but yeah. literally, so when, like Pastor Andrew said, when you just picture those lyrics and it's just you and the Lord and you just focus, you literally just say, you know what, I'm, me and you, this is me and you, Lord, and I'm going to picture whatever it is. And you just do that. It's actually just an amazing tool to do. So, yeah, I was really encouraged by that. Thank you so, so much, Pastor Andrew. And even in this time, as we encourage, we want to encourage you. And we just want to take this time out to pray for you if you feel like you've been at a place where you've been just so caught up in the rush of things and you just want to focus, you just want to take this time out to focus. So we're just going to take this time to pray out for you right now. So yeah, Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for this teaching that was taught, Lord God. And we just pray, Father God, for every single ear that is listening to this message, Lord. And we pray, Father God, that you will bring a sense of peace that surpasses all understanding over their mind, King of glory. I pray, Lord, that you will also... Um, bring oneness within their spirit, within their soul, within their mind, that, Lord, anything that will be causing any kind of rush, any kind of, um, you know, just total unfocus in their life, we pray that you just bring that in, rule that, rule that in, Lord God, and we just pray for total focus in their lives, whether it's been education, whether it's work, whether it, anything that's just been in their life just has been too much for them. We just pray that the, in this time you will help them to just reel it in and just be focused, Lord God, and we just pray that you will enable them to do so. In your mind's name I pray, amen. amen. Guess what time it is, it's events time. I love the fact that summer's coming up because that means more events are coming up and more events for us to share with you. Um, first up, David's Tent. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but David's Tent is a collective people, co people collectively gathering to just worship the Lord under one roof. And they have, they've been having worship nights. I went to the last one, which was just absolutely amazing. Like, it was just so nice to be surrounded by so many different people, different walks of life, different backgrounds, you know. And it was just, yeah, they were just worshipping God, just pouring out their hearts at, before God. And it was just so nice to see people just fully immersed, do you know what I mean? And it was just from young age to old to um, old age. So yeah, I really do encourage you guys to be at the next one. It's one not to miss. It's free. So what are you losing out? If anything, you're gaining. So I really encourage you to be there. Bring your friends, everybody that you know. It's happening March the 28th in Central London. All details will be below. If you want more information, davidstent.net is the place to check out. But yeah, it's all below. Make sure, make sure you are there because I'll be there. So see you later. And I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Another unmissable event is on the 11th of April. You just can't miss it. it. LCF Music are releasing their album. It's their debut album launch. You all need to be there. They are doing some incredible things in worship at this moment. And yeah, 
I'm gonna be there. Are you gonna be there? I'm definitely gonna be there. I don't I'm know if you checked it. out the music video. Make yep. sure you do so as well, because that I'm looking forward to the album. It's gonna be a good one, definitely a good one. All the details are gonna be below, so be sure to check it out and make sure you're there. Yeah, I guess that's it for now. Thank you so much, guys. Um, we want you guys to keep on subscribing, keep on liking, because it's only happening because of you, do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Upper Room TV. On Twitter, it's Upper Room TV as well. Um, yeah, just keep on, on YouTube as well, Upper Room TV. So yeah, guys, please check us out. We also have a playlist. Keep on checking that as well. The link will be below as well. But yeah, um, that's it for now, I guess. It is. Thank you so much Thank for you so much. knocking in. <laughs> yes, and remember, you've been watching The Upper Room, the channel that empowers you, the worshipper, to go deeper. So until next time, bye. bye.